Hi guys, thanks for tuning back in to Last Humans Tech. What I want to talk to you today about is the RPM Package Manager. Now this can be used for a few different Linux flavors such as Red Hat, Fedora, CentOS, and OpenSUSE. And your RPM would be your low-level package manager and your YUM would kind of be your upper-level package manager, your front end. And we're going to talk about the RPM first. So the most common RPM command you will ever use is RPM-QA. Now let's talk about the QA option. Q means query. It means look at or investigate. And A means all. So you're basically going to query all packages on the box. And I'm going to pipe this, redirect this to more to stop it at the first screen. And we're just going to look at the package list. Now, let's talk about the format of the package names. The first section is your package name, of course. You then have your version and your release number. And you then have an, a type to show if it is for a specific Linux flavor. This FC means Fedora Core specifically is what it was made for. And you might see an EL6, for example, that would be Enterprise Linux. And finally, it shows the architecture. Now, NOARC means that it can work on just about any version. And the 64 arc here the underneath means it has to have 64-bit. It's a 64-bit package. So that is what the description of the file name will tell you. By the way, I hope you're liking my enlarged font. Um, my last couple Linux videos were kind of hard to see, and I decided to enlarge the font here to make it much more easy to see. Another very important command you will use with your RPM package manager is your help. Remember we talked about the four different ways to get help on a particular command. So you could use RPM help all the time. As you can see here, you have dash A for all, and dash F, dash group for particular file and group owners and to query a package file and you have query options down here also and you do want to go through a few different options here and learn quite a few. You're going to need more than just the QA so it would be a good idea to kind of play with a couple options try and get some of this memorized in case they throw you a strange one on the test but just remember RPM dash dash help will be able to give you a lot of help if you're trying to figure out the correct command to use. Now RPM has its package database under var lib RPM. Let's take a look at what's in there. So these are basically database storage and you can't actually view and go inside these as you can see here, they're not directories, they're files and if you view say packages for example, it's really a, just a bunch of gobbledygook so I'll control C and we cancel these funky fonts because it didn't like me doing that so you don't want to be doing that but that is Another command you'll want to take note of is how to rebuild your database. So this will be one of those double dash options that we looked at. And what this will do is refresh your database for everything that is currently installed. And you want to do this every once in a while to kind of make sure your database is up to date and fresh. And as you can see, this shouldn't take too long, just a few seconds there. And now what is so to speak it has rebuilt the registry of the packages so now it is it has a reference for every package installed on this system another command we can look at here is how to get info on a particular package so we're again going to use the Q which is query right and the I which is info and I'll just do a common package that I know exists so this is how you're going to look at the information on one particular package. As you can see, there is a lot of info in here, version and release numbers, architectures, 
and a lot of more information, even descriptions on what it's about and what it does. Remember RPM-QI to look at the details of a particular package. Now I do not have a fresh package to actually perform this, but I just wanted to show you a command. If you download a new RPM package, it's best to check the signature and make sure that it's a valid package and that it's functional. So that would be another double dash option called check sig. And you would then put your package name or your full package name as it stands after downloading. This will not work as I told you because this package is not in this directory but just for example there. So RPM space dash dash check sig and then your full package name including architecture and that is how you can ensure a package is safe after downloading before you install it to your system. Another important command you will need is how to install a package. That's an easy one. That's the dash i. So RPM dash i and again this package will, is not here so this won't work. But remember the dash qi this is not the same I we're talking about. The QI was part of the query, part of a set. And when you use I standalone, it is an install option. So RPM I would install if indeed I had this full package sitting in the directory I'm currently at. Then this would have worked. All right, remember we used the QA command earlier to look at all packages on the machine. Now in addition to the dash QI for info on a particular package, you can also get around that by using the grep, or let's do gedit for example. So again we're querying all, but we're going to send that to the grep, which is a type of search, and searching a particular package name. So this should come up and give us information on this package. This is an alternative to using the QI with just the package name itself and you can see this gives you very little info just the package name itself we're now going to talk about the yum package manager for the red hat and associated flavors yum stands for yellow dog updater modified do not ask me why yum is the front end to the rpm it's more efficient and it can automatically download and install packages it can fix dependencies. So there are a couple spots where your configuration files for the yum are stored. Let's look in Etsy and look at the very bottom and you have two important files here yum.conf and yum.repos. Let's clear the screen and just look at the Y files. So your configuration file is yum.conf. You need to know this. I'll put a pipe of more in there or a less since I used more earlier. Same basic thing here. And it's going to show you the configuration. And obsolete is an important option that we'll just mention later. And this isn't edited too often, but it does allow you to do more advanced adjustment work on your Yum package manager if you choose to do so. Then the place where your repository files are stored would be your yum.repos such as repository dash d I believe and now we are in this file this is where your basically your database is stored your information and you can see there aren't too many spots here this is again a special repo file you cannot really view this this is kinda like a database setup and it just shows your updates, your regular packages, and a testing directory also. Those are two important files that you want to know that are related to your yum. Your yum.conf and your yum.repos-d are the two most common areas here associated with the yum package manager. Now remember we had the rpm-qa to look at all files. What about the yum command? The yum is going to be yum with a list option and you're going to do all and we do want to pipe it to less so we can slow down the screen a little bit this is how you will see all the packages in the box using yum rather than rpm it's collecting its information 
and it will give us information in a minute. And here you go. And again, you can scroll through the A's, the B's. You can see just the first column. It's not going to go across columns with package names. Each, each row of this printout is a package, it's information, and more details on the side. So it goes all the way A through Z. You can get some minor information on a particular package using the yum list option and then a package name. See this does not tell you a whole lot. It just again gives you the same info that we got from the yum list all but it's isolating one particular line which will make it a lot easier to manage if you're just studying one package. Just like the RPM, I do not have a package to install right now, but I wanted to let you know about this other command. So you had yum list and you have yum install with a package name. So I'll click it and it's actually checking it, checking any dependencies, installing, and I will click yes. See the RPM could not go out this far and find the package. The yum is much more advanced so it's actually going out to the internet to find the package and I'm gonna click yes to go ahead and give me a fresh nmap package. That's why the yum I think is a better way to manage your packages. It just works quicker, faster and is a lot easier to use. Now remember just a minute ago, we did the yum list end map, which was a very minor, a minor line. Now you can do yum info. So now we're up to we have yum list, we have yum install. Yum info is a much more detailed way to view your package information. Let's compare this to above. So here you can see you can use the list with a package name for small details or you can use the info, yum info, and a package name and you get all the information that you need. Finally, let's look at the yum update command which should update all packages. No packages are marked for update, that's okay. Then you also have the yum upgrade command and this could delete obsolete packages but only if you have modified your yum.conf file and there is an obsolete option that says 1 right now, if you change it to 0, then it will delete all obsolete packages. But because it is 1, it keeps you safer and it's not going to wipe out any package that you may need later. Again, no packages for update. Let's see where we are here. Let's back up 1. We're in Etsy now. Let's view our yum.conf and I'll show you that obsolete option. You can see right here what we just talked about. And if this is zero, upgrade will delete obsolete packages. It defaults to one to keep your system a little bit more safe. Normally you don't want to take packages off if you don't have a valid reason. So you could actually make upgrade behave differently if you go into this yum.conf and you really know what you're doing with that obsolete option. And the last thing I want to show you here is all in one command, your yum-config-manager. What this will do is show you all the configuration of yum. So you have every different configuration here. This is quite a substantial command and it'll show you all the configuration of your yum. Now you won't need this too often but it's nice to know it's there if you want to check particular configurations of your yum manager. I hope this gave you a little insight into the RPM and yum commands for the Red Hat and associated flavors of Linux and I will be doing a Debian based package tips and hints next and thanks again for watching Last Humans Tech.